Professor Myers. First of all, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us today and, um, of course, sharing some of your insights and experiences with us. My first question is, you're currently researching in the topic of risk allocation. What are the most important insights so far, and how can they help policymakers? Uh, I, I'm in particular interested in risk allocation for banks and other financial institutions. The, so let's think about banks as an example. Um, and I published an article with Jamie Reed and Initial Arrow on this topic that is somewhat technical, but we'll do an easier version sometime. You can certainly read it. I think the two big lessons that come out of that work and the thought I've been giving this question over the years are number one, uh, having plenty of capital in a bank is important because regulators cannot otherwise control risk. The temptation for banks is to say, I don't need much capital because we've got a wonderful risk management system inside the bank. And besides, we're subject to very tight regulations from the Fed or the European Central Bank or the bank regulator of bank rate regulator that is relevant to the bank. But the fact is that internal risk management's fail, management systems fail, and the regulators cannot know enough about what's going on in the bank to control risk from the outside. And I think the only solution is to ask the banks, or force them, to operate with more capital than they'd like to have. And uh, by all means, the regulators should watch the banks and watch what they're doing, but not pretend that they can control risk directly. Yes. I think the solution is more capital. The other solution, which probably will be controversial, is that many of the risk measures are used in banks right now don't make any sense at all. Value at risk doesn't make any sense. Risk adjusted rate of return on capital don't make any, doesn't make any sense. They may work in context, in practical context, but because the bankers understand their limitations. But if you have something that has built-in limitations, there's no reason to use it if there's something better. Yes. So you can look to my article, and there's something yep. better in there. I think. <laughs> I think. But to be fair, we haven't taken the next step of being very precise about how to implement it in practice. Mm -hmm. yes. um, my next question is, what is your opinion on Basel III? And do you agree with the, reg with the current regulator regulatory focus? Or does your research show a different approach on the banking regulation? In a way, I've already asked, answered that, right? Because I think that uh, the secret of keeping banks safe and avoiding the kinds of meltdowns and bailouts that we've seen is to force the banks to hold, hold more capital than they would like and not to pretend that regulators or Basel rules can solve the risk problem or the problem that banks may take on too much risk. So I'm going to exaggerate now and say that if banks had sufficient capital, we wouldn't need Basel III. Okay. Now, understand that that's an overstatement and a simplification that I make to make a point. Thank you. Um, what is your impression of President Trump's economic policies, and how will they shape the future U.S. market? Now, that's a question that I'm not going to answer because I don't think anybody knows the answer. Okay. I, like most people, was flabbergasted, that is, greatly surprised when he won. Uh, like most economists, there's a lot that he said that I do not agree with. But now I think that we should just relax and see what happens when Mr. Trump and his team meet reality. Yes. Uh, my impression of Europeans is that they, if I may say this in a friendly way, is they just want to relax for three months <laughs> instead, okay. of, instead of worrying out loud every day in the Financial Times or yes. whatever. Just relax. Okay. See what happens. Trump has been good macroeconomic news, which has also surprised everybody. I'm not saying the macroeconomy has improved yet, but the market's optimism about the macro, macro economy is evident. Okay. 
And uh, my last question is, would you recommend your students to come to the WHU New Year's conference, and why? Well, it's a good conference. And the students seem to be enjoying it. Yes, very much. <laughs> and uh, the students that I've met, I appreciate it a great deal. So therefore, by all means, come. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, thanks.